As a car enthusiast, everyone would love to buy a car, enjoy it for a few years, and then make a few bucks when it comes time to actually sell that car later down the road. Almost all cars that you will buy today will depreciate over its useful life and will be worth substantially less than what you bought the car for originally. Many people know that it is possible to invest in exotic or hyper cars where there are a limited number of high value, high performance cars that have high potentials for appreciation over the years. Sadly for most people, this dream is not feasible. The ability to buy and invest in a high performance exotic car like this is just not attainable for the average person. I've always wondered what car could the average person purchase today, enjoy say for five to six years, and then sell it down the road and make a profit off of them. Well, today guys, you guys are in luck. We are gonna be going over 13 Volkswagens with the best investment potential that the average person could purchase today. I figured out that this list would probably be the best overarching variety of Volkswagens with the best potential to make a buck or two off of these cars when it comes time to sell them. If you guys are new to the channel, I've been working on a series called All You Need To Know. And I've compiled a list of information about several different Volkswagens that have increased in value substantially over the last few years. I want to share this information with people so they can actually enjoy these cars and potentially make a buck or two off of these cars in the future. I just feel like it would be a nice experience for people and also it's a way to save and cherish these beautiful classic cars. If you guys enjoyed this content, go down below and hit that subscribe button. And if you guys wanna see more videos like this, go down below and hit that like button to show your support. Now, as a disclaimer, this list has no guarantee that these cars will appreciate, but there are a few key factors that I'll list out at the end of this video that may explain why these cars are increasing in value so much over the last few years. So guys, without further ado, let's go ahead and let's jump into the first car on the list. The Volkswagen Beetle has been around for many years, starting production in 1938 through 2003 and then reintroducing the model from 2011 through 2019. This car has been through several generations which has made several Beetles very valuable. In general, the older the Beetle, the more valuable the car is. The Beetle with the most potential to increase in value would have been produced in the 1950s through the 1960s. Older Beetles from say the late 1930s through the 1940s are on the market for almost $100,000 today and have already seen their prices run up over the past 15 years. The next Beetles to actually start increasing in value would be the 50s Beetles, which today you could find them for around $35,000 completely restored. The late 60s cars are even cheaper than the 50 cars and they can be bought for around $10,000. It really depends on the current condition of the car. The cleaner and more original the car is, the more valuable that they are. The rarest Beetle you can find in this year gap would be the 1952 to 1953 Beetle. This car has a split rear window that has driven up the price of this car. Today, people are asking between $50,000 to almost $100,000 for one of these cars. The 1952 to 1953 Beetle most likely have already appreciated in value, but if you guys have that money, the 1952 to 1953 Beetle may be a good long-term hold for you. This car by far is one of the most beautiful cars on this list and has been seeing strong appreciation over the past 10 years. The Carmen Ghia was Volkswagen's first attempt at making a 2 plus 2 sports car and personally I think that they nailed the design on this car. If you guys look at the body, you can see that there are no seams which means that the builders had to weld, fill, and contour the body to make the beautiful design that we know today. Only the doors, hood, and trunk are not one piece. The Carmen Ghia is no speed demon though, with a 0 to 60 in about 6 years in reality, it's actually 30 seconds. It takes forever to get up to speed in this car. Volkswagen even ran ads showing the Carmen Ghia with racing stripes and with the slogan saying, you would lose. 
So as you can tell here, they definitely did not intend this car to be a fast sports car. The best part of the Carmen Ghia is that it has potential for this car to really go up in value. Currently, the 50s cars with around 40,000 miles are selling for around $35,000 in perfect restored shape. While a pretty rough, say, Carmen Ghia would be going for around $2,000. As you can see, there's a huge price gap between these kinds of cars. Overall, the next few years, as more Carmen Ghias start to rust out, these prices will continue to go up. The most popular Carmen Ghia that you can find today is the Type 14, but there's also a more rare Carmen Ghia called the Type 34, which will sell for a premium over the more common Type 14. I think that this car is one of the most underrated cars on this list and easily will be a classic car in the near future. What do you guys all think? Let me know what you guys think of the Carmen Ghia in the comments section down below. I would love to know what you all think about this car. Personally, like I said, I think this is probably the most underrated car with the potentially highest upswing in value on this list. The original hot hatchback that started the front wheel drive sporty hot hatchback sensation is the Mark 1 GTI and is a very collectible car that people have been seeing steady increases in value over the years. The Mark 1 GTI really made a name for itself in the performance area. This car was so light that it could outhandle all cars in its equivalent class and a 0 to 60 took only 9 seconds which you may think today this is actually a pretty slow time, but back in the 80s, a 9 second 0 to 60 would be equivalent to a Corvette, a Datsun 280ZX, or a Mazda RX-7. Now that is pretty damn impressive for a little hot hatchback from Germany. Sadly, North America never got the Mark 1 GTI, but today people are importing them from Germany due to the collectability of these cars. You can expect to pay as low as $6,000 all the way up to $20,000 for a Mint Mark 1 GTI. As this car gets older and more people modify the stock Mark 1 GTIs, they will keep increasing in value and even be harder to find. Definitely if you guys can find a Mark 1 GTI in say even the United States, jump on one of these cars, they will be worth money one day. In the 1990s, Volkswagen was looking to introduce a new 2 plus 2 sports car into their lineup. The introduction of the Volkswagen Corrado saw instant success with many magazines and car enthusiasts. Auto Express Magazine described the Corrado as regarded as one of Volkswagen's best driver cars. British Magazine listed the Corrado VR6 as one of the 25 cars you must drive before you die. And the car was also featured twice on BBC Top Gear. That is, I think, pretty amazing little uh, remarks from the media, especially from a 1990s little sports car from Germany. The Corrado had noticeable features, such as active aero for the rear spoiler and the first car to be designed by computer-aided design software. Many pieces of the car live on today in modern Volkswagen models, such as the active aero can be found now on the new Arten, the dynamic chassis control on the Golf R, and the clear cockpit architecture in the Volkswagen Passat. Both the G60 and the VR6 Corrado are the most desirable options to purchase. A high mileage VR6 Corrado or G60 Corrado could run you around nine to $12,000, while a low mileage car could cost upwards of $20,000. Pretty crazy to see a 30 year old car that is going for such an increase in value. If you guys want to actually get a Corrado, I highly recommend you jumping on these cars now before they even skyrocket higher in price. One of the forerunners of the modern cargo and passenger van and beloved by many around the world, the Type 2 was an iconic symbol of the anti-war and peace movement surrounding the world in the late 1960s. The most sought after and collectible Type 2 bus and truck today is the first generation, the T1 from 1950 to 1967. The split windshield rear mounted motor was a success for the bus. The bus and the utility pickup truck are getting harder and harder to find today. A fully restored Volkswagen bus or truck can range from $40,000 into the $100,000 price range. 
pretty impressive but expected since this car was an iconic symbol for the 1960s. If you're looking for a more affordable bus, the second generation or T2 can be picked up for between $10,000 all the way up to $30,000 restored. They will most likely not increase in value like the T1 buses, but there are still a good chance that these cars will increase in price as the years go on and those T1 buses and trucks become even more expensive and harder to purchase. One of the coolest enthusiast oriented commuters and family cars out there today, the Volkswagen R36 came in a sedan or wagon option with a beefed up 3.6 liter VR6. Now, if you've never heard of a VR6 motor, they are probably one of the best sounding motors out there today. The 3.6 liter VR6 found in the R36 was the most powerful VR6 ever made, making 300 horsepower, which allowed the car to do zero to 62 miles an hour in 5.6 seconds. This car finally allowed Volkswagen to compete with BMW and Audi in the sport wagon game. Volkswagen never mass produced the R36, and the car was never sold in North America. If you want to buy one of these and live in North America, sorry guys, you're gonna have to wait until 2032 before you can import one of these cars into the United States. In Europe, the R36 with higher mileage are selling for around 14,500 euros, which in US dollars, that is 15,300 US dollars, while a low mileage R36 is selling for 19,000 euros, or that's also around 20,700 US dollars. The R36 was the last R model that came with a VR6 motor. As this car gets older and Volkswagen moves away from that VR6 platform, I feel that these cars will start to increase in value. If not, at least they will hold their current value into the future. This next car has become one of the most popular enthusiast oriented Volkswagens you can buy today. The Mark IV Volkswagen R32 took the GTI and added some much needed performance to the car. The R32s are known for great handling and the ability to modify easily and upgrade to get more performance out of the car. The Mark IV R32 is a rare car with only 5,000 being made for the US market and approximately an additional 5 to 8,000 being produced for the rest of the world. They are getting harder and harder to find, and the ones that you actually do find today are mostly modified. A completely stock Mark IV R32 with low mileage, say 18,000 miles, recently just sold on Bring a Trailer, forget this, $40,000. The average price for a mid to high mileage stock R32 is in the ten dollars to $20,000 range, but recently they've been seeing increases again in value. I do think within the next 15 years, the R32 is going to go up in value and is gonna be considered one day to be a collectible Volkswagen. So if you guys want one of these cars, look at buying one now, cause they are already going up in value and will continue to go up in value over the next few years. Now this next car, I feel that a lot of people are sleeping on. The Mark IV GTI 20th Anniversary and 337 Edition GTI in stock shape are seeing some impressive numbers from recent sales. I personally think that these cars will go up in value due to two things. One, they both are anniversary cars, and second, they were produced in limited numbers. In 2002, the GTI 25th Anniversary Edition, or called in the United States the 337 Edition, was released. This car marked the 25th anniversary of the GTI first being produced in Europe. Only 1,500 units of these were produced for the US market and sold fast when they first were released. In 2003, the GTI 20th anniversary edition was released in North America to celebrate at least the 20th anniversary of the GTI being released in North America. Volkswagen only produced 4,000 units and the car was very similar to the 337 edition GTI. Both cars over the years have been highly modified by enthusiasts and it is incredibly hard to find a low mileage, completely stock car. On Bring a Trailer, a completely stock 20th anniversary with 57,000 miles just sold for $16,200. That's almost the same price as what a Mark IV R32 are selling for. 
Modified 337s or 20th anniversaries can be bought for around five to $8,000. It just really depends on the mileage and how modified these cars are. If you can find one of these cars in stock condition, they will keep going up in value over the years. Regardless of mileage on the car, I would even say a completely stock one of these cars is worth buying. This car was built to comply to the FIA standards so Volkswagen could compete in the FIA World Rally Championship. This car was Volkswagen's first attempt to make a four-wheel drive performance-oriented hot hatchback, which later the R32 picked up where the Rally Golf left off. In the 1990s World Rally Championship, Volkswagen competed with the Rally Golf, but their highest placement was fifth at the Tour de Course in France. That year, Volkswagen took home 10th place overall, scoring only 10 points. This would be Volkswagen's last year rally racing until they reintroduced the team in 2011. From 1989 to 1991, Volkswagen only produced 5,000 cars to meet the manufacturer's requirement for the car to enter the World Rally Championship. If you are looking for a rally golf, well, you are going to need to get one from Europe and this is going to cost a good amount of money to get one over here. The prices can range between $25,000 to $35,000, depending on the condition and mileage on the car. You will also have to pay uh, to get them obviously to the United States, which that will include shipping. And once they get to the United States, you're gonna have to pay customs and duty taxes, which can definitely add up quickly on this cost on the car. The car is rare, and as they get older and older, the limited number made will help drive up the overall price on these cars and make it harder for the average person to buy one. Now this car is the newest vehicle on this list, but over the next 25 years, I do believe that this car will hold its value and maybe appreciate like some other cars on this list. In 2012, the Mark 7.5 GTI Club Sport S was launched, but sadly it was only released in Europe with a limited number production of only 400 with 100 being reserved for Germany only. The true question here is why does Germany always get these awesome cars and the rest of the world is always left wishing that we got these? What do you guys think? Do you guys wish you got one of these cars? I know I wish the US got the Club Sport S. This car was built to celebrate the 40th anniversary of the launch of the GTI. The car output more horsepower than the new Mark 7 Golf R, around 306 horsepower, which is amazing for a factory spec GTI. New this car cost $45,000, which would make this car actually the most expensive Golf model that you could buy today. Surprisingly, already this car is worth more than the MSRP value. Cars with 30,000 miles are selling for around $50,000, and the cars have been only out for eight years. I feel how rare this car is, and as the car gets older, the value will remain high and probably increase even more just because they've only made 400 versions of this car. It is fairly rare for cars in general. The SP1 and SP2 were built from 1973 through 1976 and were designed to be the replacement for the Volkswagen Carmagia in the Brazilian market. At that time, the Brazilian market was closed to imports, so all cars would have to be made in Brazil. When launched, the car drew media attention with its many improvements over the air-cooled VW lineups, improvements in the interior and the exterior features. Even with the beautiful styling and the interior upgrades, the car was a hard sell. The SP1 and SP2 were notorious for poor performance, only making 75 horsepower in the SP2 and 65 horsepower in the SP1. They never could actually compete with their competitors in the Brazilian market. In total, only 10,250 units were made, which makes this car rare today. If you want to import an SP1 or SP2 into the US, it is going to take a lot of cash to do so. These cars are selling for around $25,000 in rough shape up to $70,000 in beautiful restored original condition. The overall rarity of the car and the beautiful sleek body lines has driven up basically the value of these cars substantially over the years. To me personally, 
I kind of feel like the design looks like a little bit between a Datsun 280ZX and like a Porsche kind of mixed together, which I personally think if people in the US knew about these cars, they would be going ecstatic for them. Now, for many VW enthusiasts, the newer VW Beetles are not the most desirable cars, but there is a one Beetle that mostly all enthusiasts would love to own, and that is the Beetle RSI. The car was a super rare 250 production run car with a beautiful VR6 motor under the hood and a four motion all wheel drive system. Basically, this car was an Audi TT with a Beetle body placed on top, but it also gave the Beetle a much more aggressive design to show the performance upgrades. Since these cars are so rare, they do command a high price for the newer Beetles. Depending on the mileage of the car, they can range from $40,000 all the way up to $80,000. They haven't really gone up too much recently, but as these cars get older and older, um, I definitely do think that the Beetle RSI will go up in value again just by the sheer limited production number of these cars. The last car on this list is always a fun car to talk about, and that is the Mark III Harlequin. In 1996, Volkswagen commissioned 264 Golf Harlequin five doors for the North American market. The crazy mismatched colored panels made the Harlequin a hard sell for dealers when the car was first released. To many people, it seemed like a haphazard setup of different panels just bolted onto the car. And to be honest, it basically was. Today, the Harlequin are highly sought after by Volkswagen enthusiasts. And from looking at registries, it's estimated that only around 113 Harlequins exist today. If you want to buy a Harlequin, expect to pay between eight to $10,000 for one in excellent shape. As these cars get older, and more rare and harder to find, these prices will go up in value. So if you want to buy a Harlequin, definitely jump on one now. But good luck actually finding one. These cars do not come up for sale often, and when they do, they are pretty hard to get and a lot of people are bidding on them. I hope you all enjoyed this list of the top 13 Volkswagens with the best investment potential. If you all enjoyed this video, go down below, hit that like button, and subscribe to the channel. I'd really appreciate it. I'd love to hear in the comments section which cars you think would be the best Volkswagen potential for investments. For me, I would personally pick one, the Volkswagen R32, the Volkswagen Carmen Ghia, and the Volkswagen SP2. The one thing to take away from this video is a few reasons why these cars may increase in value. One thing that I personally think many of these cars will increase in value is the common rarity of all of these cars. Many of these cars had production numbers lower of 15,000 cars worldwide. And also some of these cars are now so old that there are few examples in excellent shape that are really worth purchasing. To put that production number into perspective, Lamborghini produced 14,000 Huracans since the launch in 2013. That's pretty low numbers. If you think about it, the R32 in the United States only had 5,000 of them, and worldwide there's an estimation of only around 10 to 18,000 R32s. So that's kind of in the same ballpark as a Huracan. I know they're not the same cars, but the limited rarity of them is the same kind of idea. Second, when car enthusiasts were kids, they always idolized specific cars that they would love to own when they actually grow up. I know for me personally, I always loved the Mark IV R32 and wished one day I would be able to purchase one. When kids turn into adults, their passion is still there for those cars, but now they actually have money and they're able to purchase those cars, which in turn will eventually help drive up the value and the price for those cars. I've actually put a poll on my Instagram and Facebook asking you all what cars do you think would be the best potential investment Volkswagens for the future. As you can see, many of your cars that you have listed have made this list. If I missed any of those cars, I'm sure you guys will let me know in the comments section below. I would love to hear what your thoughts are overall on this top 13 list. If you all enjoyed this video, like always, go down below, hit that like button, and subscribe to the channel. 
I'd really appreciate it. It would just help the video place higher in the YouTube algorithm and let me know that you guys are enjoying this content. Till next time, guys, my name is Andrew. I hope you enjoyed this video. Peace out, guys.